it's for my nerdy mind, you know, like, let's feel safe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm here with darling Lily <laughs> and Lily and I know each other through mm. my beautiful daughter who is pictured behind us and that is a portrait that Lily created for her birthday along with some of your incredible crochet on display um, so I thought that that's all there was to you until I discovered what is it that you're studying dear Lily? I am studying theoretical physics. <laughs> <laughs> A long life dream. Of... I am tickled pink <laughs> by that. <laughs> I just love how you demonstrate that all things are possible. You can yeah. be a skateboarding yeah. rock star, a crochet queen, and a theoretical physicist. It is impossible until it's done. And you're also like, a, you love... Um, boarding in the ocean and I mean you're amazing <laughs> <laughs> I think you're amazing Sharice and I'm it's, so happy to be here with you <laughs> it's mutual adoration it is so definitely <laughs> I want to just get right into it and I want to hear about some of your struggles in terms mm -hmm. of because people will think if they're watching that you're 15 meanwhile you had a birthday yesterday <laughs> And you turned, do you want to share that? <laughs> Let's say some some numbers into <laughs> some variables into my 50s. <laughs> exactly, which is truly incredible. Um, so, yeah, what are some of your struggles studying at the moment? Yeah, mm. uh, I think the biggest struggle was the realizing that uh, I was no, no longer fresh from high school <laughs> in every sense. Shocker. <laughs> yes, in every sense of the way. And uh, but accepting as well that that uh, could be a good thing. Mm. So I had to struggle to accept that that would be a good thing. I actually deal and uh, to this day trying to understand and accept that being my age and going back to study, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. But it's mostly because of my self-judgmental idea of what I supposed to be and how I supposed to um, uh, achieve my academic pathway, and uh, I think that was the worst struggle uh, dealing with my own insecurities of my age and obviously carrying insecurities throughout the life as well that has to surface, like I said, you know when I we were faced with maths <laughs> and and things that you actually in high school you believe like okay I can do it I you know I was very good at high school I now being I build this image like okay now I'm 50 I can get it done I'm going for it and it's not going to be a problem for me to achieve mm -hmm. what I want to achieve uh, I, I feel stronger about myself and then when i being faced with the reality of academic uh, and, and it was totally different <laughs> it was very scary mm -hmm. and it brought it up on me a reality that I thought I, I didn't have like the self-doubting the the realizing how over judgmental I am about myself as a, as also as a woman mm -hmm. I find out that even that was a bit of a you know doubting the ability, my ability also of, of making through it, you know, as, as, as a mom, as being like almost like my, my past few years was a mom. She's not just so, a mom, she's a, a grandma. grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finding similar struggles because I'm busy doing my doctoral studies at long last. And um, I'm also shocked by just how much less energy I have yeah. than back in the day. Mm. And I'm a healthy, fit person. Mm. I know what to do. I try and take care of myself. We do Qigong mm. together, which yes. is very good. And I love your Qigong, by the Hi, way. Hi, Thank you. <laughs> um, but I'm finding it, yeah, I'm realizing I can't maybe do everything after mm. all, that I do have to make some choices. And that's a difficult, humbling place to find myself in mm. yeah it is it's very humbling absolutely the same 
Yeah. <laughs> it's very humbling. It's, I had a conversation with a friend of mine. Um, he probably, I will definitely send him the podcast. <laughs> yeah. You all know I'm talking about Sivandas. And he is a um, lovely, lovely, also is my Dutch friend. And I, I actually said to him, I was totally like confronted with the violence of of mathematics and and uh, you know it, it, uh, not only mathematics but it's studying and that actually made me feel like am I able am I going to to do this and he uh, put me in the spotlight that was very difficult mentally and then obviously physically because then I started in seeing the amount of work seeing the amount of times am I going to be able to to physically do this am I going to be able to physically show up for me every morning you know like and the worst my friend I'm not a very structured person <laughs> with times I actually <laughs> it's very relative time for me it's very relative oh please talk about that so time <laughs> is one of my <laughs> obsessions in my own research. so belly yeah uh, also. So, I, and I, I've just sent you a voice note from the mountain where I was walking where I was listening to Deleuze and Guattari's A Thousand Plateaus which I can't wait to see oh my god it's exquisite um and they really very interdisciplinary so even though I'm in the humanities they do tackle mathematics mm. and you know the very fabric of existence in this kind of rhizomatic uh way where they they say the way that science has traditionally been structured where you build on previous findings is a profound flaw I yeah so I think that leads us into something that we're both very intrigued with which is um for want of a better word, the spiritual realm. And I don't know if you want to riff on that in terms of your physics. Uh, how do you marry uh, your knowing around uh, the spiritual experience of being embodied? Yes, I, I don't think I would be even searching for that in, in, in academic science. Like, sorry, my English is also not that great, my friend. So my choice of words might not be the best. Like, it's, my English is really bad. No, <laughs> very, very, very Brazilian. Very Brazilian. Do you want to say it in Portuguese or Italian or one of your other many languages? You know? Thank you. <laughs> I wish I could, but maybe numbers. Maybe so numbers. Both of us the, this could be a, a, a probably a, a, a very comfortable place. But this is what I like it about having to challenge myself with the words. It's because that I, I, I will be confining myself, just like we confine the subject of spirituality, looking into a scientific explanation for it, when I don't truly think that we should be even uh, researching in textbooks from, from the traditional science, all folding, you know, traditional mathematics and, and, and everything that the academic world uh, I mentioned to you earlier about the freedom also of the creative process on scientific research. Mm, wonderful. So, yes, this is on things I think that also, uh, but I'm a student, mm. so, you know, I, I don't have much, uh, like I would say, authority to even speak about the subject, but I would just say that we are kind of confined in, in that aspect. Mm -hmm. I think I was spirituality. I, I profoundly believe in science. I, I love the simplicity and, you know, this is what it is and, and how certain it is. I do love to believe the idea that we already know all the constants of nature that we have. But I was a student, so obviously, like, that for me, I look at it in a way like, okay, we, it's a lot to study. So if it, this is all we have, that would be so great because then we can just... But, but also there's the simplicity. If everything is just there already, and we know everything already, we just have to merge it. Great. But now going back to the point of the spirituality, that is something that cannot be confined. Mm -hmm. I also believe on that, that we have certain abilities and certain hidden aspects of our consciousness and of our existence that are actually almost out of the scope of science. 
I don't think there is a particular method of, of scientific method that can actually able to go into and have a look at it, which is great because it gives it open up for new types of sciences. Yes. That's exciting. <laughs> that really, like, that yeah, excites that, that me too. Yeah. Yes, because it gives you like, okay, physics might be giving you that wonderful background and explaining very well the, from the micro to the macro. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to consciousness, that's when we, you know, I'm not a neuroscience. I'm not, I do believe also strongly for my personal experience. So I'm not talking about mm -hmm. with any scientific background, but from personal experiences. A little bit of my as as a student, mm. but I do believe that consciousness is a phenomena that it exceeds any science, mm. and whatever spiritual uh, um, phenomena we experience, we all experience. You know, certain kinds of uh, either uh, clairvoyance. Uh, uh, abilities we all had it in our lives mm -hmm. or that feeling that we had it inside or sometimes a connection with events that are happening collectively mm -hmm. you know between people around and conscious around it, it's it comes out of of this scope of of what we have it here mm -hmm. and it, I, I believe the spiritual is linked to the to consciousness but knowing in science how little we know about consciousness so this is where I, I I kind of think the science and the spiritual realm, uh, they have what people believe pursue to be as, as a division. Mm. But it's it's not really a division, my friend. Oh, please speak about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't I just think there isn't the right science or the right tools of scientific approach to the phenomena we experience because we know so little about consciousness. You know, like I, there is a lot of progress on studies today. I'm not a neuroscientist. Or I'm just a mm. physics student. You know, like, mm. <laughs> looking for my graduate project program. But this is we needed a, a new form of scientific approach for for that uh, for the topic of consciousness. So it's to be a scientist and come and say, okay. Uh, I don't believe on an existence of a spiritual realm. When I'm studying physics and maths, my entire life, it's it's inappropriate. I believe inappropriate. Yeah. Oh, I love that because I I, <laughs> I, I mean, haven't studied the other side. I know nothing. When we were chatting yesterday, you mentioned something about the quantum and how everyone's obsessed with the quantum. True story. Yes. It's so funny because right after you said it, everything in my newsfeed, you know, quantum this, quantum it's, that. It's, yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because I think it's a profound misunderstanding in the popular culture at the moment. Yes. Because you explained something so beautifully to me yesterday around the mechanics of it. And I don't know if you can... Yes, uh, definitely. Yeah, I really okay, can cool. talk about that. It would be quite sitting on the edge of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> All the wisdom. <laughs> uh, you have so much wisdom. I usually come to you for wisdom. <laughs> You're the one that brings my wisdom. But, uh, yes, the quantum, uh, people use the quantum word almost like you must just help me with the English choice of words. So like I say, my English choices are not the best. But they will pick up the word and think, okay, it sounds like, a, let's, for instance, you know, the ability of a particle be a wave and a particle at the same mm -hmm. time, like light has the duality of light, for instance. Okay, mm -hmm. so it can be like a wave phenomenon. And they apply that to what they believe to be either ourselves. But that it's only applicable for the microscope, you know, a, a wavelength that we're actually dealing on that on that side. So quantum mechanics does not, it's it's mechanics, literally, of the quantum world. But it's only applicable for that realm, you know, for that particle, mm -hmm. subatomic particle mm -hmm. realm of existence, which is also part of us, but it's not fundamentally what we spiritually would do, I believe it. You know, like now we're talking, trying to mix it both together. So not only talking like as a physics student, but yeah. also I'm now talking as myself. Yes. In my yes. personal view of the things. So I don't think quantum, when people come talk about quantum healing and quantum experiences, I found that that is a, dis it's a, it's a misconcept. 
mm-hmm. and it's it, it it does it's not applicable for the phenomenon because consciousness itself like i'm going to roger penrose okay. again which i love dearly you okay. know but um, i i still wonder i don't know I, I can't believe that consciousness itself is, is a quantum mechanical only phenomena but we get there but using the quantum word to explain spiritual phenomena is it's not correct because it's only applicable to one realm and the uh, spiritual phenomena that we experience is actually applicable for what we're experiencing here on the micro world the macro world you know as 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 beings as mm. as you know humans with a certain wavelength with a certain height you know <laughs> we're not subatomic we made of subatomic particles but we are not subatomic particles mm. so it would be inappropriate to do that and also that you see a lot of 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 uh, discrepancy between the, the, not discrepancy that's not the right word but would be like a, a almost like a um, tension between the scientific side when they they hear the are we talking about quantum mm. it, it's more a neuroplasticity type of work I would say, you know, as as we we actually, I believe truly that we have the ability to to change yeah. and manifest whatever we. It's inevitable. It, absolutely, I mean, so we can. Comes back to my so favorite it, principles. Yes, <laughs> I, I am a big lived experience through meditation, that's right. and gong mm-hmm. of the law of impermanence, um, anicca. I probably mention this in every podcast because I think it's so crucial to making peace with existence, Mm. you know, otherwise you're in the way. So um, when you were talking now, um, I was thinking of Karen Barat because she's really big amongst feminist new materialists, of which I'm trying to become one, (laughs) very much also a student at this point. But she wrote an exquisite book called Meeting the Universe Halfway. And so she uses those, uh, that what you discussed of the wave and the particle and the, mm. to apply it to a way of looking at the world diffractively, of, um, of reading things uh, sort of uh, from in between mm. rather than that kind of Descartian sort of the mind knows best and very structured, very cold and Deleuze and Guattari much the same. They kind of um, wanted to be more organic. So more effortless in terms of our being here and interpreting what's here or as we perceive it through the senses and mm. the senses of course, are limited i don't know if there's anything that this is bringing up for you <laughs> a lot <laughs> yeah a lot. okay absolutely Let me know existence is organic yeah so it should be just very natural that we have that mm-hmm. ability to maybe i'm 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 not understanding my language barrier again but it could be like I see that existence is so, it's very organic and it's supposed to be very fluid, mm-hmm. very, it you know, we tend to even say, oh, okay, this is a, a spiritual phenomenon. But it, what is a spiritual phenomenon? Mm-hmm. It, it might be a very much part of our senses that we're not using and we're confining in the name of a spirituality, but it's actually not. We actually might be just, mm-hmm. util, you know, getting access to a part of us through meditation, yeah. through qigong, to uh, you know a self awareness type of yeah. you know work that I, I would I call it the face. spidey but, senses, you know, like yes, 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 <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know the extra. It could be easily an extra sense that we actually, with an evolutionary process, for some reason, which I always believe religious religions and and things of a kind. We're able, like, to suppress it, uh, you know, uh, mm. teaching us violence actually of, teaching yeah. us to suppress yeah. the side that is actually very empowering mm. and very, you know, it could open up for, for such new realms of sciences and things that it's it's you it's know everything. is everything. Mm. So the, there is a realm of our consciousness that we actually are able to change the structure of our, I wouldn't say a physical structure, because I would be really like 
but we actually have a, 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 a soul type of structure mm. of our reality and existence. I felt it. I mean, when you do long sits like on Vipassana, 10 day, all day, every day, oh, I felt, yes. I thought it was my atoms reconfiguring. Like I literally was jolting with this kind of restructuring mm. that was going on. But I love that you say it's in another realm. Mm. So is when I've experienced those amazing like golden light experiences through meditation, I've always thought what I'm experiencing is the dancing atoms, uh, you know, people call it different things, the divine light, samadhi, mm. you know, that bliss of oneness with the light that everything is. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anything you want to add to that? <laughs> it could easily be that you are actually now emanating like, you know, you this vibration mm. okay talk about vibration what your this for me the surroundings and then, so i don't feel like it's me emanating matter it's, vibrates all the time yeah matter vibrates it all the time in fact matter is a vibrational mm -hmm. state you know it is on on the fields but and and that's what I feel yes. in Qigong and, in, yes. you know, I very quickly feel that dissolution of a separate self mm. um, because the great suffering in the Tibetan Buddhist uh, medicine Buddha mantra, Teyata Om Bekanze Bekanze Maha Bekanze. So it's um, the suffering of the body, the, the suffering of the mind, but the great suffering is this illusion of separation. Yeah. Yes. Um, and... That's why I love the practices like Qigong and meditation because very quickly one loses the sense of separation. Uh, that is, that's, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I think somehow uh, separation is also a physical idea that we have it. For instance, I look at my body and I think, okay, I'm inside here, I'm confined to this. There's no for me to come to you. I have to drive my car and I, you know, like what a nuisance. Yes, and do my things. They're like I just can't just appear here. Yeah. You know, like but meanwhile, uh it, it's it separation is a physical illusion. Yeah. Me. I always think like cannot we it's if I go into field theory and and I haven't been yet studying field theory as a student, so I'm not going to even venture to say much in next. My professor's going to watch this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, hi, Felix. <laughs> You're going to be watching this. <laughs> but it, it's, it's, it, it is, uh, I believe that consciousness goes above this. Fields and again, my personal belief, I'm not saying that that's what I learned in university and not claiming that science teaches that either. It's a personal belief through experiences and a little bit of knowledge that I have in science. Mm -hmm. I still have a long way to cover, so I do have a bit of knowledge in science, but not enough as a professor mm -hmm. trying to get a good mark here. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, my friend, I believe that we actually we don't have literally like a consciousness does not have body consciousness leads this body to do certain things mm -hmm. and the body obeys laws of physics just like the universe obeys the laws of physics and there's nothing i can do if i do throw myself on the a bus i will get injured you know no matter how much meditation i will do that the, <laughs> where the body starts to react to something before the mind has even but that's the thing i just love this so I, I always believe that yeah. the mind is not confined mm -hmm. to the existence that we actually live it in here so mm -hmm. this is why it's so hard to confine consciousness in science mm -hmm. it's like caging consciousness just trying to explain it with variables and things that we have it here with constants and it's something that doesn't actually really set on it because the ability to observe and the ability to learn it's quite something that is in its own is extremely magical oh yes <laughs> amen sister <laughs> so, you so there we go clarify. yes yeah. that we as the observer do not need to experience a description. We, the scientific 
aspect of it, it gives us the description of the object, for instance, the chair. Mm-hmm. But we are the people experiencing the chair. We are actually now, I'm sitting in the chair, I'm exerting a force on the chair, the chair is exerting a force on me, and I'm experiencing all of that happening. So I do not need a branch of science to tell me what I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. That is a total different lab. I am a different lab than my physics lab. My Mm -hmm. physics lab gives me the description of what the chair is and the normal force and gravity and, you know, and all the forces acting together. But I myself, I'm a different lab. Mm -hmm. I'm observing this. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling, I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. And that is, for me, quite fundamental. Oh, my God, it's everything. It's quite fundamental because we almost like we have a a reality, a kind of a description of reality. We don't really have a full description of reality, but we have a kind of a description of reality. But our experience, it's, it's a very, it's much more than what science has to offer at the moment. So it gives you a description of, like I say, on the quantum world, on on the field world, on every other aspect. Of this, but the, the our existence as a spiritual being, mm. it, science hasn't yet touched that. Mm. Maybe it will soon, and I think it, it seems to be walking in that direction. You, we, mm. if you watch closer to truth, mm. you know with. Robert, most of the talk, it's about conscious. The whole idea is is conscious. So maybe on that direction, yes, it will happen. But we have to also understand that this experience that we have with the spiritual phenomena or the soul phenomena or conscious phenomena or whatever we wanted to call with, you know, higher consciousness as God, as the universe, or as our higher self or everything we want to call it it is it's it's big it's broad and and bigger than the description that science gives us of of the real the the reality of what we actually experience in every day mm. i fully believe that yeah so it's it's it makes no it's it's hard to put together mm. and say okay this is a quantum mechanical phenomena there is the quantum healing there is the quantum no it is not you know, the quantum mechanic phenomena is actually almost like confined to a quantum mechanic realm. We not. <laughs> Break on free to the other side. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's excellent. No, perfect, my darling. 